Hello you lovely lot and welcome to a brand new video. Of course it is the scroll box number 92 April 2023. It's a bit of a mouthful isn't it? But anyway, let's crack on with what's inside, shall we? So obviously we always start off with a print. And this month's featured artist is Candace Fincher. And I love it. The colours on that are gorgeous. That is going on the wall of all the others. I really do need to get around to showing you that at some point, don't I? We always get a sticker. We always get the scroller zine. We get a prompt and we also get some candy as well. This month's candy is a chocolate lime. I personally find them quite repulsive, but I'll probably eat it anyway because I am weak. But let's do a quick run through of what's inside before we start swatching, shall we? So we have a small set of Faber-Castell Albrecht Druer Magnus watercolour pencils. We have five colours and I'll go into those a bit more whilst I'm swatching. We have the Frisk Masking Fluid Liner, a Pro Art round brush in a size four, and yes, some Frisk watercolor paper, 300 GSM, and obviously it is an A5 pad. You know me, I do quite like the Frisk paper, and yes, I am always happy to have some more of it, especially the watercolor stuff. Of course you'll have seen me also flick through the magazine, it contains a bit of a feature on the featured artist I guess, as well as highlighting some of the work that you guys have done and obviously they've published it in there, it's a great feeling when that happens so well done. And of course there are hints and tips to using the supplies, so I guess that's a good way to move on to this next stage which is the swatching! As you'll have noticed, you will have seen me assembling the Frisk Masking Fluid Fine Liner. It's basically a masking fluid, but it's got more of a precision nib rather than busting up your best paintbrushes or even your not so best paintbrushes, because I hate, absolutely hate ruining paintbrushes with masking fluid. And this actually was quite a good way of applying it, but I'll go a little bit into that, obviously, as the video progresses. We also were provided a gorgeous little tin of the Faber-Castell Al Albert Drewer watercolour pencils and they come in a warm grey, a light ultramarine, a dark phthalo green, a dark cadmium orange and a light yellow glaze. For swatching purposes only, I've pretty much just used them in the regular way, scribble on the page, hydrate with the water, smoosh it around with the brush, there you go. I only needed it for a colour reference, so I didn't feel the need to go too intricately. And I of course used those pigments to go over the areas where I had masked off, and I'm sure if you've seen how masking fluid works, you wait for everything to dry, and then remove it, and it should leave the surface underneath untouched. It really is important to make sure though your masking fluid is dry before adding the paint and then making sure that your paint is definitely dry before removing the masking fluid. And yes, that is another thing to go on to a little bit further in the video, but it wasn't a complete disaster, but we learn, don't we? Anyway, let's talk about the prompt. So this month's prompt is metamorphosis and Obviously, I think there's a butterfly on the print that we received, so I didn't want to do a butterfly. I did something based off a moth because moths are also quite beautiful creatures and as long as they're not flying around my head at night, I'm okay. You'll have noticed that I had put down a layer of the masking fluid first. It is a little bit of a learning curve, getting used to the, how it dispenses from that nozzle, but I just recommend you practice on a scrap piece of paper. I'm saying that though, it came off the page really nicely anyway. You could probably use some decent watercolour paper to practice on and then just remove it because it is really nice masking fluid. And it also really helps that it is blue because sometimes especially the stuff that dries clear, you kind of forget where you've masked over, especially if it dries really quickly, you either end up going over the area too many times or you end up missing areas thinking that you've got them. So I'm, I'm glad it's the blue stuff. 
for the colour stage, I thought I would scrape some of the leads down into a palette and use them, I guess, a little bit like a regular watercolour. And that's just to add a relatively even and consistent layer down beforehand, although it's not usually consistent because I was very impatient and didn't let all of those shavings dissolve properly, but kind of like it. I don't want it. I don't want it too even. I mean, that'd just be a bit boring, wouldn't it? So there's already a little bit of texture there, we'll say. Now, I have got to say, though, at this stage, when you do use your watercolour pencils like this, and it just might be me and it might be a little bit of user error, I don't know, but I tend to find you lose a little bit of saturation when you use them this way. Obviously, there is not a high concentration of colour on the page like it would be if you applied it with the pencil, but I still find it, it goes down quite boldly, I suppose saturated, but when it dries, it's it's just a little bit, a little bit washy. And I always find that's something a little bit hard to overcome sometimes, but I think I was okay for this particular piece. I thought, well, let's keep it nice and delicate because it is a nice and delicate little moth lady here. So I, I soon, I soon came to terms with it. And to be fair, they layered up really nicely as well. I was a little bit surprised. I haven't used these Faber-Castell ones for ages. I've actually got some from a scroll box, possibly from a few years ago. I can't remember exactly when. But my point was, I kind of forgot just how nicely they layered up. And I was really surprised that the layers beneath didn't overly reactivate. So you really could tell there were some layers going on there. The uh, inspiration slash influence for the moth wings here are from a Rothschild moth. I just like the design and I got my reference as always from the free reference photos for artists page on Facebook. It is a brilliant resource. Please go check it out. I thought that this particular kind of moth suited the restricted colour palette that we had for this month's supplies and yeah, I, I, I kind of liked it and I really actually did quite like how delicate this was and if you're a bit of a long time viewer, I, I'm not very good at doing delicate. I, I, I have to like throw tons of colour and tons of precise details at things sometimes, whereas I feel like I was open to the challenge for this one and yeah, I, I I actually quite enjoyed it and I suppose I might as well like address like the whole art block situation that's been going on lately. I'm still a little bit stuck, I'm not going to lie, I'm creating a little bit more off camera just for myself which is why I've not been on the channel quite so much. But as well I've also been getting other bits and bobs done, I've got a gouache video lined up and that'll be out I guess after all of these subscription box unboxings and creating with videos are done. And a little spoiler, those particular gouaches that I'm using are the Dela ones. I use the Simply as well as the Aquafine because I've just noticed that popped up quite a lot more. But don't worry, I will go through those other ones mentioned. And thank you very much to everyone who had a say in me making that decision there. Much appreciated. Also, I'm wanting to have a little play around with lino printing because gosh, it's been a hot minute since I've done any of that. So I think I might do a video where I explore that a little bit in the future, but I'm just still waiting for a few supplies to turn up as well. And I guess we're kind of caught up for now. So thank you so much for being really patient with me, especially while I've just been having a bit of a break. I'm not gonna commit to overly regular uploads. I'm just gonna take it easier for a bit mainly because I'd rather produce a good video than just chuck anything out. So anyway, I'll leave it for that. So as you can see, I am now peeling off the masking fluid and it had done a tremendous job. The paper didn't come up with it, which I was so happy about because it is so annoying when that happens. And the paper left behind was pristine and white, very similar to my reference photograph I'd worked from. I was at a little bit of a, what do I do now? Because these colors, they, the darkest one we'd got really was the warm gray, but I felt the most saturated one we'd got was the dark cadmium orange. And I thought, actually, you know what? Rather than trying to fight and make that gray 
be the dark outline for the wings that I wanted. I thought I'd just play about a little bit and use the orange instead. And you know what? I'm really glad I did. I'm so happy with how that looked. It just keeps the whole thing looking pretty delicate. And I did ever so slightly, as much as I can do, step out of my comfort zone. And I'm glad I did. So maybe I might do that a little bit more in the future. I'm kind of at the stage now where I'm just filling in the odds and ends like the clothing of this little moth lady as well as just a few details here and there around her face and other garments she's wearing and it's literally just filling in areas. I decided to activate that orange coloured pencil that I put down with some water and that just made the line a little bit more solid and I'm glad I did that too. And it was just time to add a few tonal details here and there and I I'm quite surprised really actually how well this turned out and like I say it, it's been it's been a rough month creativity wise and it's just nice and refreshing to be able to do a piece and be happy with it and yeah I'm sorry I'm not sorry as well though I'm quite happy with it and the best thing is it's making me want to be more creative and I'm getting more ideas as I'm going along so this makes me happy. I'm probably gonna do a beyond the box and if I can find the other Faber-Castell watercolour pencils I'll obviously feature them in there too because why not. Anyway, totally waffling on and not really talking about what's going on screen. You'll have noticed I've put another layer of the masking fluid down and added a more sap green colour over the top. And this is where we should highlight that you should absolutely wait for everything to dry. Don't cheat and use a heat gun on it. That's not going to work. It's got to be bone dry because, as you'll see, it did lift up a little bit of the paper there. And that's because that top layer of the paper is still just a little bit vulnerable and more prone to tearing off. So, yes, but it was easily resolved with a little wash of colour and it was all OK at the end of the day. But, yeah, if you want to minimise wrecking your piece, wait for it to dry. Scrollbox says that in the magazine and they are totally right. But anyway, again, I'm, I'm very waffly on this video today and I'm not sorry, but I, I just am. And I, I think it's just because it's been a while since I've spoke to you guys. So let me know down below if you had this box and what you thought of it. Did you like the masking fluid and do you like these watercolour pencils as well? And are you a big watercolour pencil kind of person? Let me know, it's all good. Here is the finished piece and I am very happy with it and it's a colour scheme as well that I don't use very often. So yay, I was brave and I'm just happy that I was able to create something, can't you tell? Anyway, I just want to say a massive thank you to you lovely lot for watching. I do hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you found it useful if you've perhaps been a little bit stuck with your box. That's why we all make these videos on this channel, just to inspire you guys and see what we can do with these lovely materials we receive every month. I'll leave the subscription box playlist on screen for your viewing pleasure as well as something else. But in the meantime, I'll see you lovely lot soon.